Five Pro Tour top eights, SED Tour open wins, and a whole bunch more for your player on the right. He's the O Rat, DJ JD. This should be fun, and we are underway. Davis will start things off with a Scalding Tar, and we will go back over to Turtonwald, who picked up, it looks like, a copy of Stomping Ground, which he's yes. playing one of here this weekend. Yeah, it's fairly common out of these uh, Black Red Hollow One decks. The one Stomping Ground is kind of a free roll. Uh, Ancient Grudge, very good out of the sideboard in a number of matchups. Uh, specifically, being able to discard it uh, is, is fairly powerful in a deck like this. Turn while to play a Blood Crypt tapped and simply pass the turn back over to Jim. Jim going to fall down to 19. Use that Scalding turn to search up a Steam Vents, and then we'll head back over to Davis, who is on Jeskai Control. He did top eight Minneapolis with that two weeks ago. A deck that he is very familiar with. He loves a very controlling strategy, which is exactly what this deck is. Yeah, I wouldn't noticeably not having a turn one play. That could mean a number of things. E either he's going to be casting Goblin Lore this turn, or he's uh, being a little slow on his Faithless Looting, which I don't think people do enough. Goblin Lore was the plan there for Owen. Got countered by Spell Snare. And as, as Jim fetches up a land with his Flood trying to fall down to 18, talk to me about why you think players should slow roll their Faithless Looting a little bit more. So Faithless Looting is this, this very powerful card uh, that enables you to do things like play Hollow One for very, very cheap. Now, the deeper you get into your deck, the more likely it is you actually hit a Hollow One. So a lot of times you want to wait till you have a Hollow One in hand before you cast Faithless Looting, not only because sometimes you don't have another way to discard and you need to pay the one mana to cast the Hollow One, mm -hmm. but also uh, just because it allows you to dig a little deeper for like a Street Wraith or another copy of Hollow One. So it, it's, it's not always a slam dunk turn one play. A Field of Ruin there for Jim. That's land number three. And now here is a Flame Blade Adept here for Owen Turtonwald. He played Nared Mesa before that and will simply pass the turn back. So nothing too explosive here for our Hollow One player just yet. Yeah, he was really banking on that Goblin Lord to resolve. Looks like his hand has Flame Wake Phoenix, uh, Hollow One, and uh, just, you know, a couple of dead cards and Lightning Bolt and an extra land. Lightning Bolt, Speak of the Devil, a Child Peer, will take care of Flame Blade Adept as we head back over to Davis. Of course, with Jeskai Control, as Jim draws an island, the, the goal here is to point and click, kill all of the things, when eventually with Teferi or Celestial Colonnade. Something that you're not in love with, as I think you prefer to get the games over with a little bit earlier if you can. Yeah, obviously Celestial Colonnade's an insanely powerful card. Teferi, uh, Hero of Dominaria, you know, a breakout modern staple at this point. Uh, but they are both very slow. Turn wall, going to search up a basic mountain here on the end step, and now we are going to see Hollow One get cycled. You don't see that often. No, but when your hand is as anemic as Owen's is, I don't think that that's a terrible play. One thing you can do when you're watching both these players play Magic, but certainly a player on the right there in Owen Turtonwald, one of the game's very best is he will play a Tasker, delve away three cards. Noticeably, these decks that... Uh only run one stomping ground, they're actually unable to use Tassiger's activated ability. Mm. It's effectively a cheap 4-5 creature, and the fact that it costs one less to delve than Gurmag Angler usually leads to either a 3-1 or sometimes a 4-1 split. We'll head back over to Davis. This will be search for his Kanta. These standard cards just overcoming uh, overtaking modern. Yeah, 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 search and Teferi, you know, it, it makes you wonder why blue white isn't better in standard, but the red cards that are available are just so absurd. We'll get to that format a little bit later today. Here's a Flame Wake Phoenix from Turtonwald. He'll attack with that and the Tassiger. We'll see if Davis wants to use a removal spell on either one of these things. And you see, he's actually got a copy of Wrath of God in hand, so he might use a life total as a resource here, Todd. Yeah, I mean, he also doesn't have access to a second white right now. Uh, that would either require drawing a land or activating the Field of Ruin. Uh, but it's pretty easy to find that land with Search for Escanta. The, the problem is he wants to conserve his life total. He's thinking about using uh, Lightning Helix here, which he does. Uh, but, you know, the, the choice really between targeting the Phoenix or targeting the face is not an easy one. And obviously Jim thinking that going to the face is a little bit better here. He does go upstairs there with the Helix. Life total is now 15 to 14 in favor of Davis. He's going to resolve his search for his Kanta trigger. He's going to put Lodging Out into the graveyard. Not a great card in this matchup, especially at this stage. But he does peel off a plane. You said he could find the white land, and he did. Oh, that's a nice plane, too. I believe that <laughs> is an invasion planes. Uh, it might be Odyssey. I can't recall. 
Jim looks like he's gotten away from the snow-covered lands, at least for this weekend. Thank goodness, as there is a Wrath of God. Now let me ask you this, as he's going to clean up the creatures. In Jeskai, we typically see Supreme Verdict be the Wrath Removal spell. It looks like Jim might be mixing it up a little bit here this week, and he's got one Verdict. Looks like he has one Wrath as well. We've seen players play one uh, Settle the Wreckage as well. Do you like kind of mixing it up a little bit? I think you might have to because of Meddling Mage. Dang it. You I, I, I was going to say two words, Chris Picula. Yep. Medley Mage, just an insanely powerful card in uh, that it affects how people build their decks. Having to split uh, Wrath of God, Supreme Verdict, just is a testament to the, the strength of Medley Mage. This one, obviously, not a picture of Chris Picula, unless, you know. Unless things have changed, <laughs> which they have not. Here, have is a, not. here is a Wrath. You're going to see one of those and one Supreme Verdict here for Davis this weekend. I'm not a huge fan of Settle the Wreckage. I would like... Uh, you know, to see just another copy of Supreme Verdict, I suppose. You know, you pick the one that you think is the best. Obviously, Supreme Verdict not being able to be countered, a pretty big deal in a number of matchups. Uh, Wrath of the God does have some value in that it, you can't regenerate with things like Welding Jar, mm -hmm. but uh, not a whole lot of things with regenerate in modern. It'll be the real big fish there in Gurmag Angler. I'm gonna, Owen's going to delve away quite a bit of his graveyard. Now, again, that's a large creature that will allow Owen to bring back the Flame Lake Phoenix. That's part of the reason he left it in the graveyard. I'm sure he would have loved to get it back this turn to get in those two points of damage, but unable to, as Jim is going to resolve another search for his Kanta trigger. He does have two copies of Snapcaster Mage in hand, so the longer the game goes, if he's able to leverage those extra powerful spells off of the Snapcaster Mages, and he's able to start getting Escanta going, you know, this this is not looking good for Owen, but his deck is very resilient to removal with things like uh, the Phoenix. He'll put Lightning Bolt in the graveyard. Obviously not great against the fish, and Flame Wake Phoenix is going to hang around for a while. Electrolyzes the draw. But more importantly, Todd, as Kanta has transformed, and that's one of the best cards in the deck when it transforms. Oh, for sure. Uh, this deck is built to go long, uh, but it has closing power with things like Snapcaster Mage and these burn spells. Uh you know, it, it's going to be digging primarily for removal here, things like Path to Exile to deal with the fish. He has the option to cast uh, Snapcaster Supreme Verdict just to clear off the Gurmag Angler. Uh, but, I, you know, he obviously doesn't want to lose the Snapcaster Mage because it is a source of damage. And I think Jim might be asking exactly how does the Ferocious Trigger work here with Angler and Phoenix. Phoenix, of course, c you can bring it back at the beginning of combat if you control a 4 or greater power creature. Ferocious. Yes. Yeah, Jim here, I think he's asking the question of if this ability goes on the stack uh, during the beginning of combat and I'm able to kill this Gurmag Angler, can you still pay the red or is it a check on uh, trigger and a check on resolution? Mm -hmm. uh, because he doesn't want to play like, you know, Snapcaster Bolt, Snapcaster Bolt on the Gurmag Angler if uh, Owen can just play another large creature next turn and then still get back the, uh, the Get back the Phoenix, yeah. That would be that would be uh, not great, mm -hmm. as they say. And that's exactly what Jim's trying to figure out right now. So there is Flame Lake Phoenix. Three mana, two, two, flying haste. Attacks each turn if able, which that is sometimes a drawback. In this deck, not really. And then you do see the Ferocious Ability at the beginning of combat on your turn. So that would be on Owen's turn. If you control a creature with power four or greater, you may pay red. If you do, return Flame Lake Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's the old uh, drawback on Ulamog's Crusher. It when when really it, it's it's just don't make a mistake, <laughs> you know. You can't physically forget to attack with this card. The Crusher plays one way. It is there to give the beatdowns. There. Oh, boy. Look at that Eldrazi. I remember that one way back in Rise of the Eldrazi. He's way back over to Turtonwald. Turtonwald will draw a card. He wants to go to combat, I imagine. Well, I looks think like he, he might have something. Phoenix. Yeah, it looks like he might have a second Phoenix. You are right, and he will hardcast one. So Flame Lake Phoenix will be placed on the stack, and now Owen would like to get his Flame Lake Phoenix back from the graveyard. Quick update for you. You'll see a minute added to the clock there. The reason for that, Judge gave a slight extension from Jim's question. So it'll be plus a minute here as we work our way under 42. Plenty of time for these two players to get this match done as Davis is going to activate Escanta, the Sunken Ruin. Take a look at the top couple of cards. He'll find his Serum Visions, but that... It's not what Jim is looking for, Todd. Oh, for sure. Uh, in this scenario, hitting a sorcery off the Escanta, he was basically just digging for Path to Exile to have a, a clean answer to the Gurmag Angler that uh, would keep Owen from being able to return the Flame White Phoenix from the graveyard. Right now, Jim has, you know, uh, nine power coming at him, 
and he has the choice, do I play a Snapcaster Mage naked just to chump block? It'll be an attacker for nine, and yes, as you did mention, Jim has the option of, yeah, just using this as a chump blocker, which I think he kind of has to do. He's got to keep the life total up, right? For sure. Uh, with the... Uh, you know, without a clean answer to these two copies of Flame Wake Phoenix, even if he has something like Snapcaster Wrath of God this turn, the threat of another Delve creature or Hollow One uh, returning those Phoenixes later on, it's going to put a lot of pressure on his life total if he goes down to six there. Snapcaster Mage plus Wrath of God will clean up the battlefield for right now as we head back over to Turton Wall. And this is kind of the difference of the matchup when you're playing against humans as opposed to Black Red Hollow One. I think Flame Wake Phoenix and Bloodgast in a vacuum, those cards are a little bit worse than what humans brings to the table. But you get the opportunity here to have some resilient threats that keep coming. Threats that Jeskai has real problems dealing with if they don't find Path to Exile. Yeah, Owen here making a heads up play. Bloodgast gaining haste if your opponent is at 10 or less life. Main phasing the Lightning Bolt just to get Jim uh, to 8 which gives his cast blood gas haste, put him gym down to six. Oh, you know Turtonwald's not going to miss any of the plays. One of the very best to ever sleep up a magic card is Owen Turtonwald coming off a fifth Pro Tour top eight as the Hall of Famer here this weekend with his Black Red Hollow One deck, a deck he's pretty passionate about in modern. It's really interesting to me to see how much of a, a long game this Hollow One can play against Jeskai. You know, he didn't have the greatest of starts. I believe his Goblin Lore was countered on turn two. Uh, his turn three play was a Cycle. Uh, yeah, hollow cycle hollow one. one, yeah. And now he's basically in a commanding lead. Hey, Owen's got to like his position here. Now, Vendelian Click is going to be placed on the stack here in Owen's draw step. Owen may have a response. We'll see as he shuffles those cards back and forth. But you got to keep in mind those cards in the graveyard there, those two copies of Flame Wake Phoenix. Those are the ones that are causing problems here for Jim. Owen will reveal the hand. You're going to find another Blood Gas, another Lightning Bolt, and a couple of lands. So Owen had a plan rolled up there with the Bolt and the Blood Gas. What do you think about no response here? I, I, I don't love it. Uh, he doesn't have a ton of stuff to do with his mana. Um, giving Jim the option here to take the Lightning Bolt, I, it's, not necessar it's not a mistake. It's just a choice that Owen chose to make. If he targets the Vendillion Click, not only can he clear a blocker, he also insulates his life total from Jim's burn spells. And one of the easiest ways for these Jeskai control decks to, to steal games is to play something like a Vendillion Click or a Snapcaster Mage and ride that, uh, plus the few burn spells you get to victory. Jim's going to take Blood Gas, going to put that to the bottom of the deck. Burning Inquiry, the draw here for Turtonwald. We could have a little randomization here in a moment, folks. Though I do wonder if Turtonwald does want to cast that spell this turn. I think he absolutely does. He wants to try to find a large creature to bring back Flame Wake Phoenix. I think he led with a bolt just as a bait spell to, to see if there was something like Logic Knot. Well, here is Burning Inquiry. So I thought maybe he wouldn't cast it after casting Lightning Bolt, less cards in hand, but I am mistaken. He will still cast the powerful Red Enabler for this deck, and we'll see if Davis does have some sort of counterspell. He does not. So these players will draw three cards, and they will discard three at random. It's time to have a little bit of fun here early this morning from the Berglund Center in Roanoke, Virginia. Turnwell's got five cards. I think Davis has six. I'll do a little random die rolls, <laughs> and we're going to have ourselves a blast. This is, the, this is the reason to play the deck, Todd. Come on. I am not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, normally rolling dice, doing things at random, that, that's my jam. But it's too early. <laughs> we'll roll a couple of dice. They're going to figure out how this is going to go. Who knows how it's going to go. There we go. So I, I actually really like this way of uh, figuring out how to discard things. Turtonwald's figured out the cards he's going to lose, so he set the other two aside. The rest are underneath the Burning Inquiry that he's going to lose. So seven and one. All right, so. We've solved our randomization. Turtonwald's going to lose, looks like a, a land, a goblin lore, and something else. A flame blade adept. Uh, that means he has a land in hand. I believe his hand was two lands before that. And he's maybe got a new spell over there. He ha oh. Wow, he does. He found a copy of Gurmag Angler. That's that is one huge. Big fish. Gurmag Angler's going to come down. That's going to allow him to bring back Flame Wake Phoenix. He found the large creature he was looking for. Oh, that's so interesting. Uh, Owen actually, uh, I don't. I think he has a land in hand. It might be a Black Cleave Cliffs. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, yeah, no, it's, never mind. That makes way more sense. I was gonna say he's holding the land obviously for Blood Gas. He could have gotten back the other Flame Lake Phoenix if it was an untapped land, but I am pretty sure that it was a, a Black Cleave Cliffs. Yeah, and I think that's why he's holding it this turn too. Gives him a little bit more fuel there. 
for the Blood Gas later on. Now, Davis, he lost an Electrolyze and his Sphinx's Revelation from the Burning Inquiry. Picked up a copy of Cryptic Command, though, which can buy him a little bit of time. He's going to start off with a copy of Serum Visions. I have to imagine, Todd, correct me if I'm wrong, of course, but he's got to be on the hunt for Path to Exile, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, at this point, he's on uh, such a back foot. These Cryptic Commands are basically just going to be, you know, uh, tap your team, draw a card, which is obviously very good, but uh, it's, it's just treading water. He's already gone through two Snapcaster Mages. He can only do this for so long. Davis will play a Hollowed Fountain tapped. He is set up to play Cryptic Command as we're going to head back over to Turtonwald. Turtonwald does have that Black Leaf close in hand and picked up another copy of Bloodgast. Looks like he will play Bloodgast pre-combat. Of course, that will have haste as Davis is underneath 10 life. Turtonwald would like to get back his Flame Wake Phoenix. That'll go on the stack. And he will get it back. So now we'll go Cryptic Command, tap your team draw a card. Davis will draw a card. I believe it's another copy of Cryptic Command. As we head back over to Jim, he'll draw another card. Picked up a Lightning Bolt. Not very good in this situation, Todd. No, but at this point, he actually has the ability to Cryptic Command plus activate Escanta the Sunken Ruin. So, he might actually cobble together a victory here. You know, all he needs is one clear spell uh, to get the Gurmag Angler off the battlefield, which will... Uh, you know, keep the Phoenix Dance from coming back as well, but he also has to fight through those lands and Bloodgast. Grim Lavamancer has been found here by Turtonwald, so looking for a little bit of a reach. Owen may have found it. For now, Jim is going to activate his Kanta. There's a Path to Exile, one of a couple copies there in Jim's deck. He will select that removal spell, but he's got a lot of things he's got a path. Yeah, at this point, uh, this is where the Black Red Hollow 1 deck starts to shine in the matchup. You have all these resilient threats that don't die to traditional removal. Um, you know, you have Gurmag that doesn't die to Lightning Bolt, and you have all these two power creatures that just keep coming back through uh, in the face of Wrath of God, Supreme Verdict, but also in traditional spell removal like Lightning Bolt and Helix. What's interesting now here for Jim is he's going to play a Sacred Foundry Tap. Is he's got the ability to go Path Snap Path, but is that going to be enough? He will start with, it sucks, he's got to start with Grim Lavamancer, oh, it looks like. He drew a Snapcaster Mage. I, I I was wondering why he was main phasing that path, but that makes way more sense. He wants to keep his life total at five, doesn't want to die to a Lightning Bolt plus the Lavamancer. And uh, Jim here, no Wrath of God in the, in the graveyard because he's already flashed it back once with a Snapcaster Mage. Really needs to just dig for another copy of uh, Supreme Verdict. Turtonwall has picked up a copy of Goblin Lore. We'll see if he has any interest in casting that or if he just wants to go to his attack step. Jim is going to play a Snapcaster Mage. He is going to play Cryptic Command from the Graveyard again. That'll tap and allow him to draw. Now, what is interesting here, as Turtonwald will play Goblin Lord, Jim is going to lightning bolt, lightning bolt Turtonwald. Turtonwald's down to seven, my friend. I think Jim's plan might be on the old burnout strat. Oh, for sure. I mean, he, he can attack him down to five here. Uh, if he draws a burn spell, he can activate his content and cast two burn spells. Now, it doesn't look like Jim has Colonnade. That's one piece he's missing to the puzzle. Turtonwald has discarded a couple cards. He'll play a hollow one for free. Looks like it's just a blocker as Davis is going to untap. Davis will take a draw here. Glacial Fortress. Oof. And Field of Ruin in hand, so that is content's going to have to be pretty good, and I think we're going to see him activate in his main phase. Yeah, he has to find a uh, Wrath of God effect here. I don't love the Hollow One play from Owen, simply because uh, Jim is on the back foot, but he actually played it defensively, knowing that one of Jim's only ways to win is attack for two plus double burn spell. Yep. So he was taking a very conservative line that ultimately uh, puts him in a worse position if he gets hit with the Supreme Verdict but protecting himself from the two burn spell draw if Jim should have it. Turtonwald is going to win the game number one here over Jim Davis. Black Red Hollow one up a game here over Jeskai Control. We're going to go over these two great player sideboards in just a moment. But first, a few messages from our sponsors.
Oh, we are back here in the booth, round number one of the Season 1 Invitational here at SCG Con. Cedric Phillips and Todd Anderson watching two of the very best to do what they do in Jim Davis and Owen Turtenwald. Turtenwald able to win game number one here with Black Red Hollow one over Jim Davis. Those resilient threats in Bloodgast and, of course, Flame Wake Phoenix, very helpful there for Owen. We'll take a look at Jim's sideboard first. Perhaps he'll want those two Surgical Extraction, but he's also got two Dispel, two Ancestral Vision, a Blessed Alliance, and Elspeth Sun's Champion, a Wear Terror and a Static Caster, a Stony Silence, a Celestial Purge, another copy of Dillion Click and a Gate, and Generator Explosives, Todd. What do you like here for Jim and why? So Celestial Purge, an obvious slam dunk, uh, a two-mana answer to some of the more resilient threats in uh, Flame Wake Phoenix and Bloodgast due to exiling is very important. Uh, it's effectively a two-minute path exile that doesn't give them a land. Uh, Elspeth on Champion, I think, very good. A way to uh, not only win the game if you're like, behind, uh, you can catch up, uh, but also just minusing to kill all the Gurmag Anglers, Hollow Ones, and Tassiger. Is that Static Caster? Might be okay. Not sure. Uh, Blessed Alliance, you know, the fact that you can gain a little life while making them sacrifice a creature, maybe not so bad, but if they get the ball rolling with things like Blood Gas and Flame Wake Phoenix, sacrificing uh, that creature is, is not where the Jeskai deck wants to be. Uh, the surgical Attractions I don't think are that good either. Again, they are an answer to something like Blood Gas or Flame Wake Phoenix, and he's probably bringing them in because I don't think the counter spells are very good. Okay. Um, you know, it, it can really go either way. Uh, those are the cards I do like, though. For Owen's side, he's got four Leyline of the Void, three Ancient Grudge, three Fatal Push, two Collective Brutality, two Thoughtseize, and another copy of Grim Lava Mancer. I know that Jim had to path the Grim Lava Mancer in that first game, uh, just in case. I'm not sure how good Grim Lava Mancer is in the matchup, but you got to like the discard, right? Uh, I, I don't love it, but it's better than Lightning Bolt. There okay. aren't that many great targets uh, from Owen's side. He's going to probably board out the four Lightning Bolt for two Brutality and two Thoughtseize. I could see a world where he wants to bring in Leyline of the Void to just brick off Snapcaster Mage, but Snapcaster Mage is not that good in this matchup. It's effectively just another copy of a Supreme Verdict or a Cryptic Command but it costs two extra mana. In a lot of matchups, Snapcaster Mage is going to be one of your better cards from a Jeskai control deck, but in this matchup, it doesn't really block well. Like, it's not trading with a creature. Either the Blood Gas comes back, or it's uh, chumping something like Gurmag Angler, which we saw in game one. Yeah, it's interesting. If you take a look at Snapcaster Mage in that game, you saw it recast a Wrath of God. He saw it buy a little bit of time with a Cryptic Command, and then you saw one just get blocked and thrown in the garbage, blocking Gurmag Angler. <laughs> I mean, fine. Yeah. It's good use of the card, but not, you know, the game-winning all-star that we're used, to, it, we're used to seeing it be. Yeah, Snapcaster Mage's uh, strength lies purely in whether or not you can leverage that to one body. Jim actually, you know, had a shot there to actually win the game if Owen doesn't draw a blocker, and he's able to draw a burn spell plus find one off Esc Escanta. He could have stolen that game, but that's just the, the highest ceiling for Snapcaster Mage in that one particular spot in this matchup. Jim's going to start things off with a Steam Vent into a Serum Visions, a traditional start there for Jeskai as he's at 18. Owen's going to do a little bit of card drawing as well, so kick things off with the Faithless Looting. Well, he drew a Street Wraith. That's step one, very good. Cycle that, try to find Hollow One. That's three cards. Well, he found a Hollow One. He'll start off with a 4-4, and I don't know if you noticed, but not one, but two copies of Bloodgast placed into the graveyard. So this Jim is nightmare is, fuel. This is bad news, right? He doesn't have a surgical in hand. He needs to hit one off the Serum Visions right now, or those blood gas are going to eat him alive. He'll scry two. Teferi is one. Snapcaster Mage is the other. I can't imagine wanting to keep both of those cards. It's not my call to make, though. That's Jim's call to make. I'm a little comfortable in my ivory tower up here. Yeah, Jim does have the Path to Exile, which is a clean answer to the Hollow One. Uh, Owen does have only two basic lands in his deck, um, I believe. That's usually the... Oh, actually, no, he has four. Excuse me. He's pretty He's pretty heavy on him this weekend. Yeah, only two Blood Crips. Maybe he trimmed down on the Feshes a little bit. Anyway. Uh, sorry. Serum Vision's here first for Jim, which he has done resolving. But even the Path to Exile that Jim can play, it's helpful for Owen as it allows him to get those Blood Gas back. We'll head back over to Turtonwald. See where he wants to start now. He'll start with another copy of Faithless Looting. So he'll draw two, Hollow One and a Mystery Card. Didn't get a great look at the second one. Don't even know if he's got a second land yet at this stage. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I think he was digging for one. Uh, looks like he has a Mountain in hand, though. But actually, I take it back. There's a very good chance you have a second land in hand when you fetch Basic Mountain with your first fetch land. Okay. 
Uh, you, you don't want to take that much damage, but at the same time, uh, you want to make sure that you keep your life total high. But if you're fetching a basic mount on the first turn, you're basically eliminating your ability to cast something like Thoughtseize. And I don't think that that's something, or a Gurmag Angular, you know. Yeah, that's true. So Owen, if he didn't have a second land, he would have he would have probably searched for a Blood Grip. Yes. Yeah, so you can deduce it that way with the fetch line. That's very smart as Turtonwald is going to have his Hollow One Path to Exile. Davis is going to search for a Hollow Fountain to do so. So he's going to fall down to 15. Turtonwald is going to get a Swamp. Trigger, trigger. Here come the Vampires. If I'm not mistaken, Owen's hand is stacked right now. He has another Street Wraith, which he can cycle to cast another Hollow One from his hand. Uh, the two blood gas coming into play basically for free. Um, just just an insanely good start from Owen. Jim taking five damage total from his land so far as well. well he'll just play a Black League Pliss. It'll, it'll enter the battlefield on tap. That'll allow him to cast all one for one mana, pass the turn back. And Jim has already dealt himself five points of damage, and he is under pressure to say the least, as these blood gas will not stop unless Path to Exiles, plural, show up. And this is kind of the problem in the matchup, Todd, excuse me, where take a look at Jim's hand. I think that's three bolts. It's just not a good card. Not, not against this deck. Lightning bolt's a smelly one. <laughs> and it's three bolts, three lands. He's dead. Like, I'm, the game's not over. He has a few draw steps left. He has to double bolt the hollow one, and he's still getting pounded for four. Yeah. These these blood gas aren't going away anytime soon. And Goblin Lore, the draw here for Turton Wall. He's already got a copy of Burning Inquiry in hand as well, it appears. Actually, he discarded that Burning Inquiry to Faithful Suiting, so pardon me. But Owen's going to make what appears to be the easiest play, which is I'm going to start by attacking. You're going to have to double bolt my hollow one. And Turtonwald is fine with that exchange as Davis will fall down to 11. Yeah, Flame Blade add up, Gurmag Angler. He can basically point and click at this point. You know, just pick one. Don't overextend too much into uh, a Supreme Verdict or Wrath of God. Make sure that you put enough pressure on your, your opponent, though. It looks like we might have a collective brutality here for Turtonwald, and we are going to. He will discard a Goblin Lord to be able to escalate the very powerful black spell. Lightning Bolt will bite the dust. You see Jim's hand there of Steam Vents and Flooded Strand. That was about the best use of a Lightning Bolt that I could have thought of. <laughs> just discarding scenario, it. Just getting it discarded. <laughs> <laughs> see if Turtonwald wants to follow up with the Gurmag Angler or not. He'll play a fetch land. There is the real big fish. And Jim, if Turtonwald finds nothing... Jim is facing lethal. Five from the Angler, four from the Blood Gas. Yeah, that Escalate 2 damage, very important here. Jim has this draw step alone to find something. And Jim is looking at lands, and he will extend the hand. Oh, and Turtonwall going to win this match here over Jim Davis. Two games to zero. Black, Red, Hollow One going to take care of Jeskai Control. And while we expect humans to be a very popular